Cut the intro. What are we doing back here? What are we doing? What is this? We just talked about 10-2. Well, you may have heard of 10-2, but have you heard of 10-2 Last Mission? It's a totally different game. I suppose I owe an explanation. Remember Final Fantasy X, the international version, came with Eternal Calm, a little movie thing. They did the same thing with 10-2. The international version came with Last Mission, which is not a 15 minute epilogue cutscene. It's just a new game. It's a small game. Not anywhere near the level of a mainline Final Fantasy game or even 10-2, but it is a separate game, thus constituting this separate review. This stupid little side thing is longer than Crystal Chronicles. And it wasn't worth it. So what is Final Fantasy X-2 Last Mission? It's a story that takes place a couple years after X-2. The three main girls have parted ways, but they're coming together again because they both receive a letter in the mail. The letter says, you gotta go climb Tower Usiter. When you get to the top, there'll be something worth seeing. And that is the story. So the whole game is climbing this 80 floor, 80 level tower. It is a mystery dungeon game. Now I don't have a lot of experience with mystery dungeon, except for growing up a little bit with Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. I don't think I quite understood Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. When I played it as a kid, it was a little confusing. I never beat it. So that's my experience with this genre. If you're not familiar, it's basically a procedurally generated floor by floor sequence. So you go on a floor and you'll be in a room with enemies. You might have items next to you. Everything is randomized. Every room is shaped differently. There are traps on the ground that you can't see, but you step on them and something bad happens to you. It's very frustrating. You might spawn directly next to the elevator that brings you to the next level. And you can choose to explore or just go as fast as you can. You might find a potion on the floor. You might find these books that are very useful in helping you build your character up more. You might find dress spheres, which are the jobs from 10-2. And you can equip a certain number at, a, at the same time. You can have a primary job and then other jobs kind of back you up in the stat and ability department. So you can build your character as you wish. It's not nearly as in-depth as it might sound. Trust me. It's still turn-based technically, so taking a step on the grid counts as a turn. Your enemies will do something too, everybody does something. And when you meet up, you attack, he attacks, he attacks, he attacks. If you get bombarded, there's a problem, but you could always just run away. And I just explained to you the entire game. This game seems like an afterthought, and that's probably because it is. Remember all those weird gimmicky mini-games in 10-2 that change the entire genre of the game for a little bit and they're they're like badly controlled but they're still fun because they're innocent little mini games this feels like exactly that except they decided to make it a 20 hour experience and it is grueling every level is the same even though it's procedurally generated it's all really the same the music i think there's two different music tracks they're burned into my memory the fighting is not engaging in any way. I'm just mostly spamming attack. Because the key element here is you can't really use abilities. You are constantly at the hunt for HP and MP. There are no checkpoints. Every five floors, you're allowed to save the game, which kind of counts as a checkpoint. But you never, there's no rest stop. You don't heal, you never gain MP back. You are surviving on your own, trying to find those things. You need to make sure you can heal somehow, so you gotta hope you run into an item, or really, you gotta hope you find a white mage dress sphere because you need cure. But you also need MP, magic. You never gain magic. At no point, you could be fighting a boss, and you get all the way to low HP and no MP. And you're like, whew, good thing I beat that boss. And you move on to the next floor and you don't heal or anything. There's no... There's no rest. It's just a straight line. And you have to maintain that MP balance the entire time. It's very stressful. 
So my solution, my main job was I was a dark knight because I like dark knights. They're cool. My second job was a white mage because I needed to heal. My third job was the gambler, one of my favorites from 10-2. Has an ability called MP dice where you roll a dice and you gain that much MP back. So you might end up rolling too low and not gaining it enough, but most of the time you're going to be gaining a net gain of MP. That is the only way I discovered to reliably get MP back. I don't know how you play the game without it. But because MP is so scarce, I basically never used anybody else's abilities ever. There are some interesting ones. Didn't bother, man, because if I use 10 MP on a big attack, but I need that later, I'm gonna regret it. Dying in this game means you are restarting the whole thing over. It kind of touts that it's like a roguelike game, because there's this vault system. You can send items to the vault. Inventory management is another major thing. You're never going to have room for everything. Your inventory's always full. You just have to hope you have the right items that you need at the time. Because to upgrade jobs, you need to combine spheres, but you need two different spheres. You also need the book that you can read that's a one-use thing that allows you to combine the spheres. So I'll be stocking up, I'll have all these spheres that I want to combine, and they're taking up all of my inventory space, but I don't have a way to combine them. And then I finally get one, and I gotta find room for it, then I gotta unequip, then I gotta merge the spheres together, then I gotta equip that, and then the book's gone, so now I have two free spots, thank god, and they immediately fill up in the next room. But there's one book called Tidying Up that allows you to send items to the vault. You might think that's a useful thing where you can store items later. No, that's what I thought. I kept sending very useful items to the vault, realized I wasn't ever finding this vault. Where is the vault? It's at the beginning of the game. This is the one roguelike element. If you die, you're sent back to the beginning, but there's the vault, and you can get all those items and then use them on this journey. There's no reason for the vault to exist then, though, in my opinion, because this is not a roguelike. There are procedurally generated things, but that doesn't make it a roguelike. It is still a start-to-finish game. There's no loop at all, unless you die. And I guess there's a loop, there's a death loop. But if you die and then you get the items in the vault, you're still starting at square one. That's basically like hitting the reset button on the entire game, except now you have like an elixir that you didn't have before. Who cares? It's obviously much smarter to just go back to your last save and go from there. This whole game just, it's incredibly messy. I mean, you can just look at the UI. There's so much garbage on the screen that you can't get rid of. There's a map right in front of you. There's six different health bars depending on your jobs. The menu opens and then you open a menu within the menu. It's so ugly and nothing ever leaves the screen. You walk onto traps and it'll it'll have a symbol that you've seen before but you forgot what it meant because it's so indistinguishable but it won't do anything when you step on it sometimes the traps don't do anything i don't know why sometimes the traps will like make you die sometimes there are pitfall traps sometimes there are traps in the way of a hallway that you need to go down so you just have to step on it it's really just a bunch of nonsense that you have to deal with pitfall traps you're just walking in a hallway and then boom you fall to the previous level, you have to do that level over again. It's like, this game is torture. Status effects don't really translate well to this game, they tried to bring it back. Confusion, if you remember in 10 and 10 2, basically like, your character's gonna do a random thing each turn. It's annoying, but you have your other party members to heal you or protect you or something. But there's no party in this game, you're all alone. When you come under the effects of confusion, you die. Period. Confusion is worse than doom, the thing that kills you instantly in a certain number of turns. Because you just, you can't do anything about it. There's nothing to save you. When, when you're confused, your character is just going to start like throwing items out of their inventory, running around in circles, <laughs> and the enemy's just sitting there hitting you in the head over and over and over, and you just die. I've watched it happen so many times, it's, it's so depressing to watch after all the work you've done up to this point since the last save. You're just watching your character die because you got confused. This game is so 
aggravating and it feels like it's complex, but there's nothing to it. You can maybe find a confusion proof item, but other than that, it's just random that you might die. It's random that you might walk on a tile to lead you to the last level. It's random that you walk on a tile that kills your job that you've been building the entire game. Literally, there's a tile that does that. It's maddening. Every 10 floors, the elevator is actually sealed off and you need to break the seal. How? By doing stuff the game doesn't tell you, it is a different thing every 10 floors, and there's no hint, there is no way to figure this out. At first it's like, kill 8 enemies or something, fine, but that's not even good enough. When you kill an enemy, you have to do like an action after it that's not moving, specifically, I mean I looked it up because it's impossible to figure this out. Kill 5 enemies, and then do an action immediately after killing the enemies that isn't moving. Then the elevator opens. That's only the beginning. The later levels, there's like five seals on this thing and they're all random nonsense like that. I wrote down one, just listen to this, floor 70, so this is pretty late. To break the seal, you have to defeat a certain number of enemies. You have to do nothing for five turns in a row. You have to drop three items on the ground. Finally, you have to meet the founder, which apparently is a thing that can happen on any floor. If you wait long enough, a guy will appear. Kind of like in Spelunky, that ghost. Remember when the ghost appears in Spelunky and he kills you instantly because you spent too long on the level? It's like that. To unlock the elevator, you need to get that guy to appear by running in circles long enough. Then wait on the elevator. As he approaches, attack him. If you do that, he will change your outfit into a different outfit. Then you need to attack the air and then the elevator unlocks. If you do any of these steps wrong, or if you wait too long, the guy comes back and kills you instantly and sends you to the beginning of the game. And get this, I make it to floor 79, and there's no elevator. There's 80 floors in the game, but there's no elevator on floor 79. So I ran around long enough and the guy found me, and he didn't send me back to the beginning. He sent me back to floor 77. Floor 80 is only accessible through floor 77. Nothing in this game makes sense. I don't think I need to go into it anymore. I think you understand that this game, um, sucks. The only people who've played this game are like the super mega hardcore 10 fans, and the people who just want achievement hunt and get the platinum trophy, of which those parties probably mixed together quite a bit, just for laughs. Remember when I talked about the achievements in the 10-2 video? Let's talk about that again. I think it was 3% of players beat 10-2. 1.6% of players even started last mission after beating 10-2. 0.7% the willpower to withstand the whole game and finish it. I guess I'm part of the 0.7%. Somehow, I've, I've covered a few obscure games on this show, but this, even though this is packaged in with one of the most famous Final Fantasy games I've ever made, still feels like one of the most obscure. Nobody talks about this. It's for the better. I mean, it's the last game in the Final Fantasy X series. That's all I really want to talk about, but let's go through the story. There is a story. Like I said, the three of them get a letter to climb the tower. So what happens? Every 10 floors, there's a cutscene. So it's been a few years. This story is kind of about these friends who have drifted apart and they come back together for an adventure because they miss each other. They talk a little about what happened in 10 to Yuna finding herself going crazy with two guns and now she's kind of like just staying in a town again. And it's just these three characters. There's no other nonsense. It's, it's kind of a breath of fresh air after 10 2, but the story is so simple. They fight a little bit halfway through about like why they were why they stopped talking to each other, you know. It gets a little real sometimes, but it's still a Final Fantasy game, so it's not that deep. In my 10-2 video, I talked about I made a little analogy to college. Going to college and coming back and realizing your friends are different now. I can definitely extend that analogy here. 10-2 last mission is about connecting with your friends that you made in college. Post-college. You had your adventure, and you went your separate ways. 
You might miss each other, but you also haven't seen them in years. It's revealed about halfway through the tower that Payne was the one who sent the letters to the three girls, including herself. She literally just sent those letters because she missed Yuna and Riku and wanted to hang out with them again. And that moment is more relatable than the entirety of 10-2. She has no idea what's at the top of this tower. It could be nothing. But she just sent that letter because she, she wanted a reason to hang out. And they talk about drifting apart. Yuna has a great line where she says, Maybe I don't like you people as much as I thought. <laughs> it's an interesting set of cutscenes. It's only like 40 minutes. It's worth checking out, I guess, if you're a fan. Don't play the game. But I definitely related to that. Like, man, wish I could hang out with my friends from college more. Anyway, they make it to the top. And there's nothing. They find an old machina device that's rusted over. And it's like an analogy for their friendship or something. But then they look out on the sunset and they go like, Maybe we'll meet again, but we're still friends forever. And then the machine like starts glowing and doing this, like this water starts coming up in a DNA wave. And it's like it's doing something, but they're busy looking at the sunset. And then it ends. And I get that green screen glitch one last time on the final cutscene. So. What a way to end it. What a way to end it. Ending of the 10 journey. That stupid green screen haunted me the entire time. I mean, yeah. I feel like this was a ranty one. But this might be the worst game I've played in the series. Not a joke. If this was a couple years later, this would be a mobile game they put out on a phone and then they'd forget about it and kill it and it'd be unplayable today. And no one would care. Which reminds me of our next entry. Final Fantasy X. It's been real. But next time, we shall begin the compilation of Final Fantasy VII.